So my channel is primarily built off of my day trading content, but is what a lot of people don't know is that when I first started YouTube, I actually started this as an AI channel. There are several people here that have been with me from the very beginning, and they're also now interested in day trading. So it's been a really awesome transition to see. But I realized yesterday when I uploaded my video about how you build an indicator and you can use AI to help that a lot of people don't know how to use AI correctly. And it can literally be applied if you structure things correctly to exactly what you're looking for in any industry, any niche, any topic. It doesn't matter if you set the framework correctly in the beginning. So is what I wanna break down for you guys in this video is you shouldn't be using your AI models like 99.9% .9 of people use them and that's like a Google search. So instead of using it like Google and like you're doing a Google search, let me show you if you take an extra 20 seconds how you can significantly increase the quality of the output of the AI model you're using. And it's five simple steps that have to go into a prompt. So is what I wanna show you guys is how to build a successful AI prompt. And there's five stages to a prompt. And the very first thing you have to do is a role. You have to give AI some kind of idea of how you want it to act. So let's build this prompt together and I will show you how you can already be better than 99.9% .9 of people using AI. First one is the role. How do you want it to act? So for this example, I'm just gonna use this. You can use it for whatever you want. This is universal. You need to start with, I want you to act as A. You're immediately right out the gate telling the AI model that you're using how you want it to behave. So I want you to act as a senior level data analyst that specializes in analyzing the stock market. Okay, we've given it a role. It can identify how I want it to behave. I don't need to explain that anymore. You need to tell it how to act. Number two in the five stages is a goal. What are you trying to achieve and what do you expect out of this? So you literally say, my goal is to have you help me identify markets and what I need to be looking for in order to further my understanding of the market and how it moves and operates during the day slash week. You could even put slash month. That way it gives you a broad overview of micro, daily, weekly, monthly. So again, role and goal are identified right now. Number three in the five stages is context. You have to give it a little bit to work with. So the context here that we're going to give it is say, I currently work a nine to five, but I need to educate myself better on how to analyze and understand market structures, movements and shifts, and be able to build an excellent plan from my day job. So we give it a little bit of context, who we are, what we do, what we're trying to achieve. That also ties back into your goal, but you're giving it a little bit more meat and potatoes there. It's got more to work with, so it understands where you're coming from. And then that moves you straight into step four. Step number four of the five stages is constraints. You need to tell it the limitations that you have or give it some more to continue adding to this meat and potatoes context that you gave it. So on the constraints, I need you to assume I know nothing and I am starting at the very beginning of this. You don't need to speak to me like I'm a child, but assume I don't know everything and need easy and simple explanations that anyone could understand. It's giving it constraints to not speak to you as if Maybe it's going to take this and think that you've been in the market for 15 years and it's going to give you really high level tiers of, well, just boom, boom, boom. And you don't know acronyms and all that. You So the constraints are, it's operating within this frame. So you have your role, how it's supposed to act. You have your goal of what you want it to do to identify for you so you can learn. Number three is the context, a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what you're looking to do, which builds on your goal. So your context re-solidifies your goal, which is then filtering back to the role. Then the constraints, don't speak to me like I'm a child, but don't speak to me like I already know what's going on. I'm trying to learn and I need your help learning. And then the last step of this is the output. How do you want it to deliver information? Like, are you a lengthy, long novel paragraph reader and you want as much as it can fill in here? Or do you want bullet points, high levels, and then you will tell it to expand on these so you can learn? How do you want the information delivered? Markdown, do you want it in a PDF? Do you want it to give you a Word document? Do you want it to create you a Google sheet? This is where you tell it how you want the information given to you so it can build all of this for you and provide it with exactly what you want. So this is my preferred method. I want you to give me all of this information in a bullet point format and have it labeled clearly. So if I read it and say, hey, I have a question on section one, subsection A, you can expand on this and we don't get our conversation confused and crossed. The last thing you wanna do when we start working with any of these AI models is 
have this whole entire long conversation and then need to reference back to a bullet point that's not clearly labeled that you can't call out, then you're copy and paste, hey, in section one, the fourth bullet point down, you said this, and then it misreads it. You need very clear labels and output. So I like bullet points with like section one, subsection A, bullet points. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, I have section three, bullet point, under subsection B, number two, that I need clarity on, and it knows exactly what I'm referencing. That's how I like my output. So Again, I won't recap the whole thing, but we have a role, we have a goal, we have context, we have constraints, and we have our output. Now, the only other thing that you could do is in chat GPT, for example, you could change your model. I'm not going to do this on here, but there's legacy models. Some are better than others, but for this example, I'm just going to leave it as is because this is going to give you great output. You could go back and put it into thinking mode or whatever you would like. You can mess around with this. People really like, and my personal favorite is GPT-40. I love that one. I think it's the best one they put out. I think GPT-5 sucks. It's just my opinion. Um, maybe I don't use it correctly, but I haven't stayed up to date on all the changes. So you can change this if you want. I'm just going to leave it on auto on GPT-5.1 and let it determine how it's going to operate here on this model. So let's send it through and we'll see the output. So you can see here, it's building exactly how I like it. Clean, labeled, easy to reference framework you can follow. I'll speak directly and keep it simple, but not dumbed down. Focus keywords included, market analysis. So section one, foundation of market, what the market actually is, 1A, I can then easily say 1A bullet point two, it knows price moves only because one side overwhelms the other. And as it continues to go, it's elaborating and it's giving me all of this. So you can see, Exactly what I mean by when you take an extra 20 seconds, when you have this framework in your head of I need to do these five things, boom, 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 type it out. This output that I'm getting right now is 99.9% .9 better than what you are going to get if you just go on to chat GPT and type in, hey, chat, I'm new here. I need help analyzing the market. Where do I begin? Boom. You used it like Google or you used it like a basic search engine and you expect to get output like this, but you didn't give it the framework to get output like this. This, when you have it down, would take you no more than 60 seconds. I say 20 because I like to exaggerate stuff like that. But to type all this out would take you 60, 90 seconds, somewhere in there. Under two minutes, you're building this out, specialized to what you need. And I used to do this all the time in real estate. I would come in here and say, I want you to act as a social media professional that specializes in viral content for my mortgage brokerage. My goal is to have you help me identify and create a market that would adapt to social media and I need trending content for that industry. And I would specialize this to real estate. If you owned a bakery, you could specialize this prompt to a bakery or a pizza shop or whatever. You literally can make this framework geared and keyed into exactly what you need. And again, instead of using it like a search engine, you have it like this, section one, section two, section three, section four, section five, six, seven, eight. Like if you took this and you put it into a Word document and you're like every single day, I'm going to work on one section, subsection, and I'm going to try and perfect this and learn it. And then you get into conversations. These chats save in your chat GPT or any of your AI models. And you come in, this could literally be your working framework for an entire new career if you set it up to what you want. You could literally set this to, I want you to act as a life coach and I want to increase my standing in my company and move up the ladder. This is my company. This is what I do. You'd give all this in the context section. My goal is within 10 years from today, I want to be a C-level executive at my company. How do I do it? You give it a role, you give it a goal, you give it some context, you give it some constraints to operate in, and you give it the output you want. This right here, you will never get this with a simple, hey, chat GPT, help me analyze the market. I'm brand new and I want to get out of my nine to five. You would not get this. There's zero chance you get this output. So guys, that right there is my AI crash course. I guarantee you, your best friend does not know how to do this on ChatGPT. Or maybe you have one friend. That's it. Everybody else that you would look at and be like, they're an AI user, they don't do this. There's no way that this is that common. And you can see the output that I got there is significantly better. Um, and it didn't take me any longer. 
like I would spend more time fighting with chat GPT to eventually get a 10th of what it gave me right there by having to be like, no, hey, you're not understanding me. I asked you to do this, but my education level is this. Okay, sorry, let me revise that. Then you spend all that time reading that. No, hey, this still isn't what I want. Okay, sorry, because chat GPT agrees with everything. Let me try and make this better for you. Gives you another output. Well, if you just took the 60 to 90 seconds to do the framework prompt correctly, then at that point, you're already off and running and you're learning and educating yourself today versus spending 45 minutes bitching back and forth with chat GPT about what it's not doing right. Put in the 60 to 90 seconds up front. This is your AI crash course. Use it for anything you want and you will get the output you want. It's kind of the same thing. You throw bad info in, you get bad info out. Correct it and perfect it. You get the best of the best.